camp, there are five players on each lacrosse team. If there are 125 people on lacrosse teams, how many teams are there all together? So we know there's a total of 125 people. And there's five on each team. So we want to find out how many teams there are. We have to, we have to figure out what math problem we need to do that. It gives us some clues over here what we need to do. The first one is saying underline what you are asked to find. So what is it asking us to find? Raise a quiet hand if you can tell me. What is it asking us to find? How many teams are there? Go ahead and do that right now. Then it tells us, circle what you need to use. What information from this problem do we need to use? Raise a quiet hand when you know what information we need to use. Five and 125, which I just crossed off the five with my circle, but go ahead and circle. Five and 125. And now we have to decide what mathematical operation are we going to use to solve this problem. Raise a hand when you have a guess. I'd imagine you can all guess because this whole chapter is on it. Right here. What operation can you use to find the number of teams? What do you guys think? Division. Division. Go ahead and write it in. We are going to be doing um, something called partial quotients today. And this is very similar to what Jaden showed us in the choose three ways. That's why I had him go last, because it's very similar to how we approach these problems for partial quotients. Um, in the partial quotient method of division of dividing, multiples of the divisors are subtracted from the dividend, and then the partial quotients are added together. So what does all that mess mean? I want your pencils down and to follow, and we'll go over it. All right, so we're going to start with multiplying by 10 because um, 10 times the number is really easy to do. So 10 times this number, what is 10 times 5? 10 times 5 is what class? No, I want you to think about the question. Don't just yell out numbers. Okay, what is 10 times 5? 50. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to do 10 times 5. And it keeps track of it over here. For They've kept track of it, but you would need to keep track. So far, we've done 10 of them. We've done 10 fives, and we know that equals 50. And what is 125 minus 50? Well, I can do 5 minus 0 is 5, and 12 minus 5 is 7. Okay? Can I do 50 again? Can I take 50 from that again? So I'm going to do it again. 10 times 5 again is 50 again, and I'm going to subtract, and I end up with 25. Can I do 50 again? No. no, I can't. But what can I multiply? 5 times what number would equal 25 or close to 25? Preston? 5. 5 times this, this 5 times this 5 would equal 25. Do I have any remainder? No. No. Now what I need to do is I did 10 here, I did 10 here, and I did 5 more here. So I have 10, 10, and 5. How much does that equal? 25. 25. So 125 divided by 5 equals 25. Okay. Now I know in third grade you guys learned an algorithm where you say, 1 divided by 5, I can't do that, now I have to go to 12 divided by 5, oh, that's 2. How many of the, this sounds familiar to you? Because I saw you do it on your choose three ways. This is less confusing. If you think about what it's asking you to do, you don't have to mem memorize a method. You just have to think about, well, I just need to start getting chunks of that taken away to figure out how many times that number will go into this number. Okay? So we're gonna um there so how many teams are there? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. So go ahead and fill this in. To me that's more confusing. I I understand how that could be more confusing because you haven't done it this way before, but as you do it more, it'll make more sense to you. Yes, Julie. How'd you pick the ten? I just picked a number that was easy to multiply by five. Yeah. I could have done twenty. I know that twenty times five equals a hundred, and I would have started with twenty. So I would have started with 20 and said 20 times 5 equals 100. 
Oh, just any numbers that are mm -hmm. And that are going to keep me underneath 125. Yes. I thought you got the, um, the 10 by 12. Nope, I had nothing to do with the 12. I got the 10 because 10 is easy to multiply by. So lacrosse, we're still talking about lacrosse. Lacrosse is lacrosse is played on a field 330 feet long. How many yards is a lacrosse field? Um, is a lacrosse field? Now this is a two-part problem because a foot and yard are not the same thing. It tells you that three feet equals one yard. So it wants us to convert this 330 feet to yards. So I have to divide 330 by 3 because of these 3 feet to decide how many yards. Okay? So they have the division problem set up for you here. Now we can do 10 times 3, right? If I did 10 times 3, what would I get? 30, 30. 30. And then I'm going to subtract and I'm going to have 300 left and I'm going to keep going forever and be, I can do by 10s forever. But I have 300, and I know that I can multiply 3 times 100 and get 300. You guys following that? Yes. Yeah. So instead of doing by tens first, I'm just going to go ahead and go by hundreds. Because I know I can do 100 times 3, and that equals how much? 300. 300. Okay. So now I've kept track that I've used 100 so far. I'm going to subtract, and how much do I have left? Three. How many times does 3 go into 30? Raise a quiet hand when you can tell me. How many times does 3 go into 30? Okay, how many times? 10. Ten. Ten. 10. So I can do 10 times 3, and I get 30. I subtract, and I end up with 0. So I did 100 the first time. I did 10 the second time. I'm going to add those and I have 110 total that I was able to take. It's kind of like subtracting. Do you guys remember division by subtracting? Yeah. Yes. It's kind of like that, only doing it really fast. So I could sit here and go three, um, 330 minus 3, and I would end up with um, 327. So far, so good? Okay, yeah. that was one time. Then I can minus 3 again. How long am I going to be here? Like an hour. And how many chances am I going to have for mistakes in my subtracting? Right? A lot. A billion. So instead, instead of doing it this way, I'm going to say, well, I know I can minus 300, and that's actually 100 of them. That's 100 threes. All in one time. So I can minus... 100 of them, which is 300, and now I only have 30 left to deal with. Well, I look at 30, I look at 30, and I say, well, I know that that's 10 threes. So I can do another 10, and that's 30, and now I minus that, and I have zero. So it's, it's basically doing subtraction the same way that we just did, only we're doing it in large chunks because they're nice and clean and easy to, to work with. It just looks different here. You could do it this way. I don't care. If you if you look at this, how many of you got it when I did it this way? Like a light bulb came on. Or that makes more sense to you. So do it this way. I don't care. You don't have to do it this way. You can draw it however you want. But just understand, it's basically like doing the subtraction of each number, only you're doing them in larger chunks at a time. Okay, questions? Um... Just to get to 300 by, by taking away 3, you would be there like 100 times. You'd be you would have to do it 100 times to get 300 taken away. Yes. Lydia. How did you get double 30? How did you get 30? Right here, 30, 30. Why does it say 30? Okay, this 30 came from subtracting 330 minus 300. That gave me 30. Did you get that part? Okay, and then I have, I'm dividing by 3, remember? So I want to take another, some more 3's out. And I know that 30, I can do 10 times 3 equals 30. Do you follow that part? So now I'm going to do 10 times 3 equals 30. 
and then I'm going to subtract it. Is that a little better? Sort of? Yeah, I know it's tricky. We, we'll do us some more. Yeah, Sean. I'm so confused how you got How I got 110? Because then I take how many times I did it. So look over here. I take how many times. This one I did 100 times mm -hmm. to get this. And this I did 10 times 3 to get this. Oh, now so I'm going to add those two. Huh? So you write that like you multiplied? What number I multiplied by. Yes. So here I multiplied by 100. Here I multiplied by 10. Together that's 110. Here I multiplied by 100. Here by 10. Okay. okay. This is just another visual way of looking at the same thing. It's just looking at it visually different. Jared and, and me also, not me like me, but am I, also found the number of teams using partial quotients. They recorded the partial quotients using rectangular models. They each still had 25 as the quotient. So the problem that they were working with was 125 divided by 5. Okay, this was the problem on the one on the page before. So Jared started with 125, and he was going to divide that by 5. So he decided, well, I know that 10 times 5 equals 50. That'll take up. 50 of that 125, and what's going to be left? 75. 75. Okay. And now I have 75 left. I can do 50 again, and that'll leave me 25 still. It's basically taking a visual and breaking it up this way. Then I could do... And he's putting up here, so 10 times 5. Now this one is going to be 25 divided by 5 is 5. I hear a lot of chatting. And now I have 0. So then I have to add these numbers here. 10 plus 10 plus 5 equals 25. I think this way is harder for me. But for some of you, you might see you might see this visually better to see it. Some of you are saying yes. So if this is easier for you, it's the same method that we did down here. And it's the same method we did on the back side. It's just showing it different. Okay, now remember I said if I was doing that problem on the back side, I would have just multiplied 5 times 20 because I know 5 times 20 equals 100. Well, that's what me did. <laughs> Now I sound like I'm just using improper grammar, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so that's what me did. She did 20 times 5 equals 100. And ended up with 25 left. And then she did 5 times 5 equals 25. And she ended up with 0. So 20 plus 5 is 25. This is the way I would have done it personally. But that doesn't mean that's the right way. I actually wouldn't have done the bar method. I would have done it the way that they showed on the back page. But it's just another visual way, if that helps you see it, use that method. 225 divided by 3. So, does anybody have any suggestions what they would like to multiply by first to start doing partial um, quotients? What would you like to multiply by, Sean? 3 times 70. 3 times 70? Yeah. Okay, can you explain to the class, because I know where you got that, but where did you get 3 times 70? Okay, so we'll go from there. I just wanted that part. So he said 3 times 70 equals 210. He obviously looked at the 22 and decided what number can I get close to that and decided the 21 would work. Okay, so he did 3 times 70 equals 210. So I'm going to subtract the 210 and I'm going to end up with 5 and 1. Okay. So here's one number that we're going to be adding because we multiplied by 70 already. I'm just going to underline them so I can keep track of the numbers I'm multiplying by. Now what number, if we do Sean's method, now what number um, am I going to use? 3 times what number is going to equal 15? Raise a quiet hand when you know. 3 times what number equals 15? What number, guys? 5. 5. So... I'm going to just go ahead and subtract that, and I end up with zero. There's no remainder. So now my quotient, I already know what my quotient's going to be. Raise your quiet hand if you can tell me what my quotient's going to be. This is where it can get tricky. Rachel, what is it? 75. Will you tell us how you got 75? What did you add? She added the 70 plus the 5. We multiplied 3 times 70 here, 
and we multiply 3 times 5 here. That's why I underlined them so I can keep track of what I need to add. So 75, 70 plus 5 equals 75, and my answer is 75. Okay? We're going to do the same problem again. Nope. Don't write it down. We're, pencil should be down. We're going to do it again with a different number. Instead, in case you didn't see that 70 times 3 equaled 210, and that's where you wanted to go. Who had a different idea first? Honestly, had a different idea first. Jaden. 3 times 100 would get us 300. Does that work? Why? But that's good, though. Why doesn't it work? It's too high, right? It goes over that. But that was a good try. I mean, that's what our minds naturally do. What did you try, Brian? 80. Okay, 3 times 80 is going to get us over because we already know how. So what would be a logical number to try? 3 times 50? What is 3 times 50, class? 150. 150. I'm going to underline my 50, so I remember I multiplied by that. I'm going to subtract 150 from 225. I get 5. I have to regroup. 12 minus 5 is 7, and I'm left with 75. Okay? 3 into 75 does not go that easily. I know what it is, but let's pretend we don't know how many times 3 goes into 75. What would be a good next step? A logical next step to um, for a partial quotient. No, out loud, please. Aiden. Okay, you guys get along, please, and keep your hands and feet to yourself. Avani, what did you want to do? What number? By 10? Okay. So 3 times 10 equals how much? 30. And I'm going to subtract. And I end up with that number. Again, not an easy number to divide 3 by. So should we do 3 times 10 again? Yeah. Sure, let's do 3 times 10. Do you notice how I'm keeping it all nice and neat over here so I can keep track of it? Um, 3 times 10 equals 30. I'm going to subtract that, and I end up with 15. Now I can do 3 times what number? 5. Equals 15. Okay? 15 times 2 is 30. I thought we all made a remainder. Where there's no remainder. So let's, let's add these. 50, 60, 70, no, 70, 5, not 70, 80. 70 plus 5 is 5. Okay, I know I'm losing some of you here. I need your eyes up here. I added the 50 plus 10 plus 10 plus 5 equals 75. Is that the same quotient we got the first time? Yes. Yes, it is. So does it matter which way we, which, which number we multiply by first? No. No, what's going to matter is that you underline or keep track some way of what you're multiplying by so that you know which numbers to add. Because then you start adding these numbers and it's going to make no sense. 3 times, I'm going to do 3 times 60. What is 3 times 60? 180. So I'm going to put 180 here. I'm going to subtract. And 8, 22 minus 80, 18 is 45. Okay. Now I'm going to do 3 times 10 again because I know that's going to give me 30. And I'm going to subtract. Oh, there I am with that 3 times 5 again. And I'm going to subtract the 15. Hold on just a second. 60, 75. I still end up with the same thing. It doesn't matter what numbers I use. Yes, Sean. So pretty much any time you, you um, do, do that, you always can end up with this. The same, you should always end up with the same quotient at the end. It doesn't matter what numbers you pick, unless you go too high. Like if we tried that three times 100, well then we see 300, then we look at this number, oh well, that's too high, I can't do 225 minus 300. So then I know go lower. Okay, that I've gone too high, I've gone over my quotient amount.